All right, so it looks like we've got a pretty uh, pretty important uh, report here that's coming out. This has been reported in the Washington Post. This is where it has originated from. It reads, some top Sanders advisors urge him to consider withdrawing. Now, it reads, a small group of Bernie Sanders' top aides and allies, including his campaign manager and his longtime strategist, have encouraged the independent senator from Vermont to consider withdrawing from the presidential race, according to two people with knowledge of the situation. It says the group includes campaign manager Faiz Shakir and Representative Pramila Jayapal, a top Sanders surrogate and ally, according to the people who spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe sensitive private discussions. And to Sanders himself has become more open to the prospect of dropping out, according to one of the people with knowledge of the situation and another close ally, especially if he suffers a significant defeat in Tuesday's Wisconsin primary, uh, which polls suggest Joe Biden will win handily. Beyond Shakir and Jayapal, longtime strategist Jeff Weaver has privately made a case that exiting the race more quickly and on good terms uh, with Biden would give Sanders more leverage in the long run, according to one of the people. The other said Weaver has used a light touch in presenting his case. Weaver and Jayapal did not return calls and messages seeking comment. Shakir declined to comment. Uh, so Sanders had, has not made a final decision, and other close allies have privately urged him to keep running, such as national campaign co-chair Nina Turner, while Representative Rashida Tlaib is also said to favor him re remaining in the race. Larry Cohen, a longtime ally who chairs a nonprofit aligned with Sanders, is waging a public campaign for him to stay in until the Democratic National Convention. Sanders, this is the Sanders campaign declined to comment on internal deliberations. Um, and so pretty much what's going on here, folks, is that there's a, essentially this split going on within the Bernie Sanders campaign. And, I, you know, so I'm honestly going a little bit now. First of all, I want to say a lot of you guys went, oh, this is fake news. These things are not fake news. Don't just brush aside stuff that you don't want to hear because you don't like it. This isn't fake. OK, it's, it's real stuff going on. And it's very obvious why it would be going on. So please don't just dismiss this as, oh, it's just fake news. Don't be stupid. Uh, but what it looks like is going on is there's a sort of split within the campaign. And I guess there's a couple more people now. I'm surprised that Fai Shakir, who's his campaign manager, wants him out. Now, I have to say that Fai Shakir, I don't know. I would err on the side of he has not been a good campaign chair. And the reason why I say that, A... He's a newbie, and so he's really new to this, right? This is not his thing. He's not really working in political campaigns, nor has he ever been campaign chair before. But last time it was Jeff Weaver, I believe, was the campaign chair. But most importantly, they had a guy by the name of Mark Longabaugh, who was the senior advisor. Who was, and the, so those are like, you know, the senior people. They ended up splitting off with all the senior people, and then they went with a bunch of newbies, which I think is a very stupid idea if you're in the midst of trying to capitalize off of your first run. And so... I think that's a big explainer as to the results now, uh, is that they really changed their personnel and that reflected, right, in what ended up happening. So, Faiz Shakir wants him to drop out. Now, again, I'm pretty torn on this. I think that Faiz has made some bad decisions. So, one thing that came from the HuffPost report was that Faiz Shakir was basically, it's typical for campaign chairs not to travel with the president everywhere they go. Because the campaign chair is not supposed to be, you know, the guy who follows Bernie everywhere, the president. But the campaign chair is supposed to be basically at headquarters, making sure everything is staying in line, making sure everything's staying organized, making sure that they all have one unison message, okay? There's a lot of chaos in messaging as well. Um, and so he traveled with Bernie instead of staying back. And so there was a lot of, you know, kerfuffles and just very non-consistent and clear messaging to the senior aides and the rest of the aides um, in the campaign, big mistake, also allegedly not so good decisions with fundraising, which is also not good, but he wants him to drop out, which is surprising, uh, also Pramila Jayapal wanting him to drop out, that's not surprising to me at all, I don't see Pramila Jayapal as being someone who is a very, you know, staunch, super staunch progressive who would want to do that, uh, it's not surprising to me at all that Nina Turner wants him to stay in the race, nor with Rashida, because those two are very strong, very, you know, hardcore sort of progressives and really for the movement and really fighting. Pramila Jayapal is a progressive, but she's more of a policy wonk type of person. Now, I want Bernie to stay in the race. Okay, I do. Now, what I am surprised about is the report that Jeff Weaver wants him to exit the race because it would give him more leverage. I'd like to hear that argument, but I'm surprised Jeff Weaver saying that because 
Jeff Weaver is very, uh, he's, he's kind of like Nina Turner. He's a very hardcore guy, you know, very sort of upfront, very hardcore, that type of guy, you know, very, uh, just straightforward with you. Um, and so that's very surprising to me that Jeff Weaver is doing that. Now, I have to say that I think that Bernie staying in would be a good idea until the convention, but the problem is this, okay? The problem is this. So I was thinking, you know, oh, it's a good idea for Bernie to stay in the convention, and the reasoning I had was uh, it'll make it so that you're sort of pressuring Biden and the Democratic Party to take more leftward positions by staying in the race because you're going to have a good share of the delegates, uh, a, a smaller share than last time, unfortunately, which is really, really sad and very pretty depressing, honestly. But you will have a share of the delegates. Um, and so you get to get concessions at the DNC as well as push the campaign leftward. So for example, uh, in 2016, what did we get for going to the convention? Well, we were able to get superdelegates removed from the first ballot. That was amazing. That was a game changer for that to happen because basically what that meant is you don't have superdelegates in the first count and you can go based off of just regular delegates in the count. That was a game changer because the superdelegate propaganda played a lot into Bernie losing back in 2016. So you got to understand this. That was crucial, right? So we're only in that situation because he stayed until the convention last time around. Now, what's tough about this, here's what's tough and makes it a bit unrealistic now that I'm really thinking about it. There's no possible way to keep taking 15 to 25 point losses and remain in the race. It's impossible. So uh, what I mean by that is he's down 25 points nationally, okay? He's down like 35 points in Wisconsin, 30, 35, 25, whatever crazy amount. It's not realistic to stay in the race if you're losing that way. And I'm telling you this, I would like him to stay in, but it's not realistic to stay in that situation. It's just not possible. You can't keep taking 15 point wins and then be like, I'm going to stay in the race. We got a path. Everyone's gonna be like, dude, what are you doing? You know what I mean? He's be like, what are you doing? And then he's going to get pressured. He's not even going to want to stay in the race because who wants to just keep losing? Like, why would you want to do that? You just want to stay in just to keep losing? You know how embarrassing that is? Um, and so I do believe that Bernie Sanders eventually will sort of, uh, I do believe that he's going to drop out probably pretty soon. I don't think he's going to last till the convention because you can't, it's impossible. Think about it, right? Just think about it. There's no way to just keep going with 15, 20, 25 point L's. It's impossible. You're going to look like a fool. You're going to look like a moron, an idiot, and a loser. And he doesn't want to do that. He's not going to do that. So in 2016, we were able to stay in the convention. Why? Because we were actually winning a lot of stuff in the second. In fact, the second half of the primary was really a turnaround for us because the first half in 2016 had all of the southern states, most of them. And so we got rocked in South Carolina and all these other states, right? But actually, even in some of those area states, we actually did better than this time. Like, uh, I believe it was, I believe we either won Oklahoma or came in by like one point, or I think it was one point was in Missouri. We came in then one point in Missouri. Uh, I think we won Oklahoma last time. Not so we got demolished in both of those states this time. Um, but in the second half, we had Washington. We got like 75%. So that left us with like 74 delegates, like 15 or 25. That's like a 50 delegate gap. And so when you lose Florida by like, you know, 70 delegates, well, hey, look, you just took up, you just took up like 50 delegates. You just cleared that lead, right? Now, the southern states proved to be too large to overcome in terms of total delegates, um, but we had a lot of wins. We had a lot of momentum in the second half. When you say it's like we were dominating, I remember a day where it was three primers. I think it was, I believe it was Washington, Hawaii, and Alaska. We swept all three. We demolished it was like a great day, great press run. Everyone's so excited. We got energy. We're like, yo, maybe we got a chance to come back in this. There's none of that right now. We're getting demolished. We're down 25 points nationally. We're down 30 points in a state that we won by, I think it was like we won five, seven points, something like that. Well, that's a decent lead. Might have even been more than that. I forgot how much we won by Wisconsin. Won by like one point in Michigan. But we're getting rocked. And so the reason why we were able to stay in in 2016 was because we were racking wins, bro. We were racking wins. We were coming in close. California, we came in with like 10 points, but we were winning elections in the second half. That's where a lot of our, you know, steam came in. We were picking up the remaining caucus states, um, and we were just doing great, you know. So that's why I think that even though I want him to do that, it's not going to be feasible. It's not going to be feasible for him to go out there and just keep losing states by massive margins, especially with the press and himself. He's not going to feel good about that. 
uh, he's not going to feel good about taking 15, 20, 25 point L's every every effing state. It's impossible. Now, the thing is that the primaries have been moved back to June, most of them, although Wisconsin is still going to be voting. So he's going to take a big L there. So it, it is potentially the case that Wisconsin will basically knock Bernie out. It is possible uh, that that happens. And so uh, definitely, uh, you know, it's going to be tough, but Ideally, he stays in, gets some concessions, pushes the Democratic Party and the DNC leftward, DNC making it more fair for progressives to run elections, run in elections, and then also uh, to get them to move more leftward, you know, and get more concessions from the Biden campaign. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's feasible, though, man. So they're calling on him to resign. Mm, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's possible or to, sorry, to, to exit the race. I'm not sure if he can feasibly stay in the race at this point. I would like to see him do that, but considering the deficits that he has right now, it's just so tough. And also, of course, ideally staying in the race because Joe Biden could sort of stroke out at any second or they could sub someone in. But I don't know. You know, it's 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 tough to see, man. It's tough.